Falter Rash, Hun and Chairman, Famishin Barach, Unsahuk, Munajihan Mahashin Gaririv, Erin Gyalting. The Dagda is perhaps the most important god of the Gaels, and is almost certainly reflected in other Celtic nations under different names. To understand the Dagda more fully, let us turn to some of the stories about him first. When the Favoiri began extracting tribute under the rule of Bress, the Dagda is set to work building the fort of Bress and digging in the earth. This is probably an expression of an association of the god to the task at hand. He's associated with power, generation, and the soil. In the Dinchenachas, he is referred to as the beautiful god of the heathens, for he was a god of the earth to them. Case closed, right? Not quite. Another tale, called the Wooing of Eden, tells us that the Dagda performed miracles and saw to the weather and the harvest. While the harvest is related to the earth, the weather certainly doesn't seem to be, and so categorizing the Dagda as either a god of the earth or a god of the sky is too simplistic. You know, the Celts didn't view the gods in this way. The gods are active forces that pervade the world, and though they may be associated to particular aspects of it, they are not spatially restricted to the earth or the sky. The physical sun, the planets, the stars, the sky, uh, the clouds, these things are related um, to some of the gods, but the gods themselves are not these things alone. They are entities that govern cosmic principles and powers, um, which give rise to the world around us. They are not the actual physical things themselves. Thus, it is not a contradiction to say that the Dagda is both a god associated with the sky, uh, quite strongly I would say, uh, but also with the earth, because he transcends both of these categorizations. So another story of the Dagda is that Lug sent him to delay the Favoiri while he prepared for battle. The Favoiri serve up an enormous proportion of food for the Dagda. Uh, porridge mixed with meat and bones and stuff, dumped in a large pit in the ground. He eats the entire amount, becoming extremely full and then passing out, um, and then leaves afterwards. And a large appetite is generally associated with a sky deity, but making an offering in a pit is related to a chthonic deity, a deity of the underworld or death. So he is then intercepted by the Morrigan, who orders him to take her on his back. Now this is likely because in his earliest form, before being anthropomorphized, the Dagda was thought of as being a bull or a stallion. Now the bull is strongly associated with uh, generative aspects, and the cosmic bull is associated with both sky and land deities from many traditions, uh, though the horse can also fill this role as well. So sometimes the Dagda is called uh, Ehu Olhadr, uh, though thought to mean horse great father or horseman great father. The Morrigan goes through a list of names for the Dagda, all of which are quite enlightening as to the core aspects of the god, and which I've spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, translating. So if you'd like to see those translations and learn more, then I'd ask you to become a Patreon subscriber in order to help me continue with this difficult and time-consuming work. So after that, uh, they couple and the Morgan agrees to help Luke and the Dagda in the battle against the Favoiri, though pretty reluctantly, because at first she tries to convince the Dagda that he should not fight. She threatens to stand in his way as a stone at the mouth of a ford, which he says he will step upon and leave his footprint, uh, perhaps associating him with the soil uh, and the imprint that the stone leaves upon the earth. Uh, she says that she will be an oak tree in his path, and he says he will strike every oak tree with his axe forever. Uh, a weapon, the axe that is, is often associated with a sky deity and lightning, as the oak tree is itself. The Dagda was also said to be able to control time. He stops the sun so that a single day will be equal to nine months. He is likewise associated with fire, being called Aed, 
meaning flame or eye, uh, which as eye, it probably refers to the sun as like this great gleaming eye in the heavens. Uh, the names given to him in the second battle of Moitura are very helpful in clarifying this fundamental nature. And they reinforce the aspect that one can get uh, by analyzing his character and the symbols correctly. He controls the forces of life and regeneration. And, you know, his staff or his club is a great example of this. One side slays men, the other side regenerates them. So he controls time also, uh, and is also connected with death and with both fire and earth, which may not be a contradiction upon deeper reflection. He controls weather and the seasons with his four-angled harp, which moves the worlds. He also likely oversees at least part of the process of reincarnation, and he fills the classical role of the Sky Father. So he's associated with both earth and sky, uh, and this is akin to Roman Saturn, as I have previously suggested, before having translated these names. However, he is likely chthonic in nature, and may well be uh, the dispater referred to by Caesar. He may be represented in Gaul by Sukelos, who is also featured with what uh, may be the five planets over his head in one depiction. However, his link to cutting and striking trees, um, also reinforced in the list of his names, might also make him a candidate for the mysterious Essus, who is also uh, featured in rather low-class clothing cutting at trees, uh, which sometimes have a bull in it. The Pictish Rhiney man uh, could also be a sort of more um, far-strung possible candidate for an association there because he's wielding a two-handed sacrificial axe. The Dagda's cauldron is a representation of his generative nature and also as his role as, uh, as god of the dead and god of reincarnation. Recall the cauldron of Bran from the Welsh myth. Uh, it resurrected the dead but deprived them of the ability to speak and this is probably a representation of the memory loss of the soul upon death. And so depriving one of the ability to speak or to know about their previous life. When Lug sends him to converse with the Favoiri, he is served a giant meal from a hole in the ground. And as I had already mentioned, this is the classical way to make a sacrifice to a Chthonic deity. One does not share a meal with a Chthonic deity. You know, when you perform a normal, typical sacrifice, what you do is you take a portion of the sacrificial animal and you burn it in honor of the god, and then the rest of the community that partakes in the sacrifice consumes that because you are embarking on a uh, reciprocal-natured relationship with the deity. You are having a friendly meal with the god. You are honoring the god by sharing a meal together with them. But you do not do this with a Chthonic deity because it's too dangerous, because of the, um, the nature of their powers are related to death. And so this might actually be reflected uh, in the story where Crindenbell demands a portion of the Dogda's food, and the result of that is, of course, his death. Like Saturn in the oldest stratum, uh, who is paired with Lua, uh, a goddess of destruction, the Dagda's consort is also a goddess of death and destruction. This is because she represents the opposite side of his life-generating qualities that are most emphasized. This life-generating power is closely associated with the essence of fire, which is why he's also strongly associated with fire. As previously mentioned, uh, another name for him was Aed, which means flame, although elsewhere said to be his son. Thus, he is fire as the generative principle of life. He is perhaps the unmanifested principle of fire as it exists within the stick before it is kindled, which is why he wears, you know, drab, gr uh, brown clothing representing the earth, the soil, fire as manifested in this static state 
So the unseen fire, which, you know, exists everywhere, waiting to come forth. And when kindled, it takes on the manifestation of other gods related to the sun, fire, light. Uh, you know, in the Vedic tradition, it w is said that when Agni, the god of fire, uh, is lit, he gives birth to Indra, Mitra, Varuna, and many other gods associated with light, flame, heat, and the sun. This fire manifests most visibly in the sky as light, stars, uh, the sun and moon, etc. But it's also in the earth's life-giving properties which sprout seeds. So even things like fertilizers uh, recognized to help crops grow, uh, things like feces, would have been associated with the god. And so, you know, the scene where Dagda is taking a dump uh, perhaps shouldn't surprise us. In Gaul, the Dagda uh, may have also been represented as the horned figure who is sometimes depicted between Mercury and Apollo, though not all horned figures are the same deity. His slovenly depiction is probably supposed to be somewhat comical, uh, but not as an insult, but reflecting the nature of the deity, uh, who is primarily concerned with generation and consumption. So he's giving life and he's consuming it back into himself as well. You know, he's probably fairly associated with the sun in some respects. If you look at the Vedic tradition, uh, I think it's Agni, Mitra, Varuna, were all said to have the eye, or the sun as their eye. So, uh, being related to fire, he likely has that, that same sort of reflection. But being associated with the sun is not to be a sun god. All the main Vedic gods, the Adityas, have some relation to the sun, and we shouldn't think that other Indo-European peoples were uh, significantly different in this conception. His daughter, uh, Bridget, is also closely associated with the fire, and likely the sun as well, perhaps as a dawn goddess. She was associated with the hearth fire, the forge fire, and even the Christians kept an eternal fire burning for her, uh, in a sanctuary open only to women. She needs uh, her own video, but suffice to say that her features are more or less like Minerva, the daughter of Jupiter. But in case anyone is wondering, uh, I'm not suggesting that the Dagda is Tyrannus. Tyrannus is a storm god. The Dagda is a god of cycles, times, seasons, generation, and death. Though it's certain that the Dagda was a god who was associated with the sky and also could wield lightning as attested when asked what power he could wield in battle and he replies that he will do all of that yet his words come right after uh, the druids uh, who say that they will call down fire from the sky in other words lightning uh, it actually makes more sense though that a god like the Dagda would have a higher importance than a storm god, especially when you consider the location that we're talking about. You know, Ireland specifically. Rain generally isn't a problem. So we shouldn't think that, you know, a, a, a god of rain and storms is going to really capture and motivate people all that much. You know, there's some evidence that Saturn was the prime god of the Romans as well, originally. Saturn is the father of most of the major gods, just as the Dagda is the father of most of the major Celtic deities, although various, you know, um, family connections are suggested. One last point I would add is a potential Greek parallel to this. In the ancient sanctuary of Dodona, mentioned even in the Iliad itself, there was said to be a giant oak tree, which in some way would convey the oracles of Zeus. Uh, conflicting accounts are given as to exactly how the oracle functioned, but the interesting thing is that there is a strong connection there between Zeus and the earth, which is not found anywhere else in Greece. The priests there were said to go around barefoot, uh, never wash their feet, and even sleep directly on the ground. Presumably, because this direct connection with the soil brought them into closer connection with the god. 
Located in northwestern Greece, the location of Dodona was uh, less Hellenized and likely reflect reflected stronger uh, European traditions. Likewise, the high priest of Jupiter in Rome held vestiges of the same exact trait, for his bedposts had to be covered with mud, and he could not be away from his bed for more than three nights. This shows that at one time, the so-called sky god, in fact, had a strong relationship to the earth, not simply as an abstract consort to the earth, but as being present in the earth. There is much more to say on the topic, of course. This is not a definitive study, but I believe that the general conception of the deity as presented is correct. So if we must describe labels, he is the god of life, regeneration, and fertility, including animals and crops, time, seasons, and fire, which can manifest as flame, uh, but also as lightning. Roman Saturn was also a lightning-wielding god. For some conceptual help, his closest parallel seems to be archaic Roman Saturn, who gave rise to Saturday and the Saturnalia, a celebration associated with the sun at the winter solstice and its rebirth. If you like this video, I hope you'll consider becoming a Patreon and contributing to this important work, where we're also going to be trying to save up funds in order to establish a real physical sanctuary. Koyu Tapalev Ersanesh Jak Agus Marasavasht Sheis Arsht